Now, how do we know that there's a God? And how do we know that there's a creator that whom should be worshipped? Well, let me give you a proverb. And Adam, man, came to the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, peace and blessing be upon him, and asked him a similar question. And Adam, a Bedouin, because these were simple people, he came to the Prophet him, with a question, how do we know that there's a God? Or how do we know that there's a creator whom should be worshipped? Let me tell you what the Prophet, that illiterate Prophet, that unlettered Prophet, that simple man, that messenger and Prophet of God, let me tell you what he said. He said, the presence of dung is the evidence that a camel was here. The presence of dung is the evidence that a camel was here. The footprints in the sand is the evidence that a person was here. And the evidence of the earth and all the planets are proof that the same one or some great power has placed them where they are. That's what the prophet said. His proof was good enough for that Arab and is good enough for me. Why should we not consider the theories of natural selection or the Big Bang or the concept of perpetual evolution as plausible evidence for the existence of the world or creation or universe? Because none of these theories can deny the fact that macro and micro systems are arranged, fixed, proportioned, measured, determined, limited, synchronized and given distinct characteristics and parameters that they cannot go beyond or exceed. Secondly, the fact that they have such predictable and recognizable characteristics allow for man to study, reflect, perform research that enables him, that is man, to reach scientific conclusions and apply certain technological instruments that provide benefit or substantiation to the evolution of his social environment. That's the facts. That's why that these plausible, these concepts of evolution, natural selection, or predetermined evolution are not plausible. The other consideration is that whatever position that you want to arrive at, you or I, concerning a divine creator, an almighty God, one thing is for certain. We cannot deny that all of us exist. Do we exist? If you agree with me that we all exist, that we're all here, I mean, I think everybody believes that we're all here. We're all here. And we are being, that we are subsisting and being sustained through a unique balance of environmental phenomena that we are not the authors of, then someone, some great power, is, has to be, must be the author and responsible for all of this. Now those prophets and messengers, all of them, profound men, they all said to their people that there is no God except Almighty God. That means there's nothing to be worshipped, nothing to be obeyed, nothing to be adored, nothing to be bowed down to, nothing to subordinate to except the Almighty. That's what they said. And they said that that Lord and Creator not only has designed the heavens and the earth, not only has put laws in the earth, but has also created a legislation, a morality, and a system for the human beings to live. Because would you think that as a parent, that you work as hard as you do, pursue your own education and your own career, and build a house or buy a house, and have a family, and then you have children, and you don't create an environment, or you don't set down any ethics or any code of behavior for your children, don't you? I mean, even though some children think that it should be otherwise, 
I think most people, most parents feel that they have a right to establish law, principle, ethics, and behavior inside their home. Don't you? Well, do you think that you have more right to establish law and ethics and behavior and a system of what comes and goes in your own home, but that the creator of the heavens and the earth and the environment that you live in, this vast universe that you see and witness and depend upon, that the creator or the benefactor of that would not do the same? Those prophets and messengers said that the Almighty has given to man a system to submit, to surrender, a system by which to recognize God, a system by which to conform to God, a system by which to worship God, and we call that system religion, but that's not a comprehensive word. When we say religion, we think that's something we do on Sunday or Friday or Saturday or sometimes. When we say religion, we think that's something that we do only for God when we get afraid or we get broke or when we get drunk the next day. Oh my God. <laughs> See, when you say religion, it has a limited preconditioning type of word. But when you say system, now everybody can relate to systems now. If it's only financial system, you can relate to that. System means comprehensive. System means an apparatus, something that functions, that everybody depends upon, something that needs to be maintained, something that is set, something that has a criteria, something that is predictable, something that everybody can look at and function and be a part of. That's a system. Well, all the systems that man, what his mind has made, don't you think that the creator would have a system better than that? Man has made a camera. Look at the eye. Man has made a computer. Look at the brain. Man has made nuclear plants. Look at the heart. Man has created apparatuses to do different chemical analyses. Look at the kidneys. Man has created all kinds of instruments to remember to detect, to do forensics. Look how the human body functions. And so, does man think that he can keep records on other men and on the world and maintain history, historical records? Does man think that he can do all of that, but the one that created him can't keep tracks on him? Does man think that he can be accountable or that others are accountable to him, that he can govern you men? government, that he can govern you men, that he can create government, but that the creator who has made the heavens and the earth does not have the ability to hold us accountable. The prophets and the messengers of Almighty God said to those at that time, to their people, that the system in front of the creator starts with submission. Submission means peace. And peace is a part of prosperity. How can a human being have peace with another human being? How can a peace process move forward? How we can find a, a solution, a peaceful solution? How can nations have peace together when they are at war with God? Being at war with God is like being at war with your own conscience. Being at war with God is like denying your father and mother. Being at war with God is like denying yourself, telling yourself that you are not who you are. Islam, as a system of faith, is that system that is the natural progression of all the prophets and all their messages and all their behaviors that culminated in the prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him that culminated in this Qur'an, that culminated in the system which is called Islam. It is a system of morality. It is a system of consciousness. It is a system of discipline. It is a system recognizing laws that regulate human conduct. Islam is a system 
of social balance. Islam is a system of integration. Islam is a system.